On the night of December 23, 1964, a group of Viet Cong guerrillas were closing in on the Trani End outpost in the Mekong River Delta. They were following a script they had mastered over years of jungle warfare. They would strike hard, wait for the Americans to call in air support, and then simply vanish into the tree line. They knew the American jets were too fast to hit them in the dark, and once the planes ran out of fuel, the guerrillas would return to finish the job. But that night, the script changed. The sky didn't roar with the high-pitched scream of a jet. Instead, a low, rhythmic thrumming filled the air, the sound of an old, slow ghost from World War II. Then, the black sky was suddenly torn open by streaks of solid red light. It wasn't just a few tracers. It was a heavy, electric blanket of fire that rained down in a continuous, thrashing tongue of flame. The guerrillas didn't have time to hide. They were being hunted by something they called the Dragon Ship. But in the halls of the Pentagon, this machine was considered an embarrassment. It was an old cargo plane that a few rebel engineers had illegally turned into the most feared weapon of the war. This is the story of the AC-47, Spooky, the outlier that redefined the physics of death. By 1963, the Vietnam War was escalating into a nightmare of attrition. The U.S. Air Force was focused on the future supersonic jets, high-altitude bombers, and complex missile systems. But in the thick canopy of the Vietnamese jungle, these high-tech marvels were failing. They were too fast to see the enemy and too fragile to stay over a target for long. Enter the underdog, the Douglas C-47 Skytrain. By the 1960s, this plane was a dinosaur. It was a twin-engine cargo hauler that first flew in 1941. It was slow, it was ugly, and the Air Force brass wanted it retired. But three men, First Lieutenant Gilmore MacDonald, Engineer Ralph Flexman, and Captain John Simons, saw something the generals missed. They didn't want a faster plane. They wanted a hovering fortress. They proposed a concept that violated every rule of aerial gunnery side firing. For 50 years, aircraft fired forward. You pointed the nose at the target and pulled the trigger. But McDonald realized that if you mounted guns on the side of the plane and entered a specific kind of banking turn called a pylon turn, the guns would stay fixed on a single point on the ground indefinitely. It was a tactical glitch. The plane could circle a target like a tethered hawk keeping a continuous stream of lead on a single square inch of the jungle. The Air Force brass hated the idea. To them, the side-firing project, codenamed Project Tail Chaser, was a joke. It didn't fit the prevailing operational philosophy of high-speed combat. The project was so underfunded and unofficially banned that when Captain Ron Terry, a fighter pilot who had seen the carnage in the Delta firsthand, joined the team, he had to take a desperate gamble. To buy the hardware and modifications needed to turn the C-47 into a gunship, Terry had to put the expenses on his personal credit card. Think about that. One of the most legendary weapons in military history was financed by a captain's personal line of credit because the four-star generals refused to believe an old cargo plane could fight. Terry and his team ignored the no from Washington. They scavenged three 7.62-millimeter miniguns monstrous weapons capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute each. They bolted them into the cargo door and windows of the C-47. Every fifth round was a bright red tracer. When all three guns fired at once, it created a solid beam of red light that looked like the breath of a dragon. When the team arrived in South Vietnam in December 1964, they were met with immediate hostility. A four-star general at Tan Son Newt Air Base ordered them to pack their bags and go home before they even unpacked their equipment. He called the project absurd. He was overruled at the last second by the vice chief of staff, who uttered the words that would change the war. We cannot deny any weapon which will enhance our capability. On that night, at the Trani End outpost, the absurd weapon proved its worth. The AC-47, now nicknamed Puff the Magic Dragon, circle the outpost in a pylon turn. The Viet Cong, accustomed to jets that zoomed past and missed, found themselves trapped in a red rain. 
the psychological effect was total. The North Vietnamese army had no answer for a plane that could stay over their heads for hours, illuminating the dark with flares and blanketing every square meter with 18,000 rounds of fire per minute. They called it the Avion Phantasma, the ghost plane. The AC-47 was quickly redesignated as Spooky. By the end of 1965, these trash cargo planes had flown 277 combat missions and fired nearly 1.4 million rounds. But here is the outlier statistic that solidifies the Spooky's place in history. In the entire history of the Vietnam War, no village, hamlet, or American outpost that was protected by a Spooky squadron was ever lost. If a Spooky was overhead, the outpost was safe. It was the only weapon in the American arsenal that guaranteed survival. The Dragon Ship was no longer a joke. It was the backbone of the war. Even as the U.S. began to withdraw, the Spooky refused to die. The technology Terry and Simons developed eventually evolved into the AC-130 Spectre, the most powerful gunship in the world today. But it all started with an old cargo plane, a rebel pilot's credit card, and a refusal to follow the rules of the Pentagon. Today, the AC-47 still flies. In the mountains of Colombia, the Air Force still uses retrofitted C-47s to hunt insurgents in the jungle. They still call it the ghost plane. The story of the Spooky tells us that innovation doesn't always come from a laboratory with a billion-dollar budget. Sometimes, the most powerful weapon in the world is a 20-year-old machine, repurposed by people who are smart enough to see a glitch in the way things have always been done. The Pentagon tried to kill the AC-47 before it ever fired a shot. But the Dragon outlived the generals who hated it, outfought the guerrillas who feared it, and carved its name into the Zafiri darkness of history, one red tracer at a time. If you've ever felt like the underdog being told your ideas are too old or too simple, the AC-47 is your proof that the system is often wrong. Hit the like button if you think the rebel engineers were the true heroes of this story. Subscribe for more tales of the outliers who broke the rules to win.